Assalamu alaikum. Hi everybody. I'm Dr. Saeedu Dhilal. Again, come to you with the new topics, medical perspective of spinal cord injury rehabilitation in the community level. I'm the consultant neurosurgeon and head of medical service center for the rehabilitation of the paralyzed CRP. Actually, we all know that the spinal cord injury is perhaps the most devastating orthopedic injury and with the prolonged survival being the rule, rehabilitation of these injuries has an increasingly important role. We the spine surgeons can fix the spine, not the spinal cord. So the rehabilitation is one of the most important phase in the total treatment process of the spinal cord injury. So what is the primary goals of the rehabilitation which includes the prevention of secondary complications, minimization of the physical functioning and reintegration and inclusion in the community. Today our main focus on the, um, the complication of the spinal cord injury. The person with the spinal cord injury are at particular risk for certain types of morbidity when they are in the community with some differences between problems in the acute and chronic phase. Are you familiar with this? Yes, I am every day. At least two or three patients admitted in my center with this type of pressure ulcer. And 50% of the readmitted cases in my center is with this type of pressure ulcer. Pressure ulceration is among the most common complications of the spinal cord injury along with urinary tract infections in acute phase as well as in chronic phase in the community level. Both of these conditions have an annual incidence of nearly 25% in people with chronic SCI. It can be prevented and treated through education and with simple, inexpensive home-based treatments as outlined in numerous international clinical practice guidelines. If you click on the Google search and you can find different types of pressure ulcer prevention guidelines, this is one of the uh, one of them and uh, what we have to do that uh, mentioning the, uh, the maintaining the position and uh, we keep free our pressure point this includes the strategies such as the provision of foam overlays on beds regular change in the position interval lift regular checking of the skin conditions appropriate bladder drainage high fiber diet and good fluid intake. Besides this, how can you prevent the recurrent UTI or immunogenic infection? We have to use the clean self intermittent catheterization which is known as the CSIC, adequate jelly, personal hygiene, prophylactic use of antibiotics sometimes. These can prevent recurrent UTI. And uh, intake of plenty of water. It is last but not least. And these three things, the neuropathic pain, the spasticity and pain in the fracture site, these three things actually very important because each and every day your patient will complain about these things. And what I say to my patient all the times that these three things just like your shadow, you can see the shadow only in the daytime and not, you, can see not, you cannot see the shadow in the nighttime. So these three things, the neuropathic pain, the spasticity and pain in the fracture, you can feel it, it's a feeling, nothing else. So you can feel it sometimes, you can't feel it sometimes. So the most important thing is that this cannot do any major harm to me, except a little disturb me. But side effects of medicine for these things may cause a lot of harm, like the beclofen, like the uh, pregabalin like the NSIDs, all uh, have a uh, lots of side effects which may cause a lot of harm to me. What I say to my patients all the times, medicine, medicine means made a scene, made a scene. If you are not use these appropriate cases, so when you use or misuse or abuse the medicine, it's a medicine. So what about the neurology, neurogenic bladder and bowel? 
The incontinence and constipation are very common for the spinal cord injury patient. So regular catheterization by plain catheter, intake of proper amount of fluid, pelvic floor exercise can prevent the neurogenic bladder. And for the neurogenic bowel, teach your patient so that they can teach their bowel. How can teach their, your bowel? So every day in the morning time, you can see it for the defecation. We call it tube pot defecation. And uh, you have to have some angle on your spine and your femur, this angle, 35 degree angle. So if it will be better if you keep a tool just below, uh, just below on your feet. So this angle is very important. So pubertal muscles will be relaxed. You can see these things and some uh, vegetables which is very much important for maintaining your bowel habits and some exercise kessel exercise or we could call it the pelvic floor exercise this is very important for a patient to maintain their uh, bowel habits the sexual dysfunction actually after the injury the sexual psycholo uh, physiology may be altered but the sexual drive persists just like an evil person. The sexual dysfunction, which includes the erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, painful coitus, infertility, urine incontinence. About the medication, again, I am saying that there are a lot of lots of medication in the market for uh, reducing or subsiding your sexual or improving your sexual dysfunction. But actually, uh, what I like to say to my pa uh, the patients that uh, actually try to avoid this type of uh, medication. Uh, the take-home message is teach your patients and their spouse that the intercourse is not the only way to get sexual satisfaction. Your whole body is more than enough to get and give satisfaction to your partner. So the satisfaction belongs to your mind, not belongs to your body. So this is the most important take home message. And uh, what I like to say, the key to successful prevention and treatment of complication is not costly or complex medical interventions, but rather patient and family monitoring, education and support. Thank you very much. If you like my videos, please discuss my channels and uh, so that you can get the new new uh, videos regarding many uh, your health tips thank you very much being with me